going to be talking about a middle grade novel that I absolutely loved, and uh, that is The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Um, and this is by Kelly Barnhill. Um, this book is so lovely. It is probably one of the loveliest middle grade books. I've actually read so many good middle grade books recently. I'm just going to say this. If you have not picked up a middle grade book recently, you should give give middle grade a try. Um, while things may not be as in-depth or... I don't... Mm, I hesitate to say anything like emotionally driven because I think so many middle grade books are emotionally driven, even though they're written a bit on a simpler level so that kids can easily relate to them. Um, I don't know. Some some of it's so good. I mean, just like regular, regular adult fiction. Um, it's just fabulous. Um, this one is actually called the gift edition. I didn't know that I got this, uh, from book outlet. There's a lovely map inside of it. This is a nice edition. Check out the inside. <laughs> There's like embossing there. This is nice. Um, I don't know what made it the gift edition. I don't know what's separate about the regular edition of this book. I don't know. But I'm glad I own it. <laughs> it's a nice edition. Um, so anyway, let me tell you about why I loved this book. Um, this beautiful little book is about this town where periodically they have to sacrifice a baby um, to the witch that lives in the woods. Uh, this is what the town officials tell the town, that there has to be this sacrifice of this baby to appease the witch so that the town will stay safe for the next course of time. Um, I don't rem remember how long the course of time was, but essentially they're getting rid of a ton of babies. Um, and they will choose the child, take, them, take the child away from their parents and march them off to the woods and the child will be left in the woods and they will hightail it out of there. What you come to discover pretty early on in the book um, from one of the character perspectives in this is that the uh, the town officials are actually lying to the town. Um, they don't believe that there is a witch in the woods, but they do believe that this is a great way to maintain control over the townspeople. So eh. what they don't know is that there is actually a witch in the woods, but she's not a bad person. And so after these uh, village officials, town officials, leave the baby in the woods, the witch who actually does live in the woods goes and finds the baby and takes the baby to a nearby village and gives it to those people to raise. So none of the children that they think that they're sacrificing uh, end up dying in the woods. So at least that's a positive that happens. Um, so at the start of this one, a child has been chosen as a sacrifice and it's a little girl and she is left in the woods. Um, and two main things happen. Um, one, the child's mother ends up kind of having a mental breakdown from it. And so they take her out of the town. I believe her husband ends up leaving her and starting a new family with somebody else. This is told over the course of a time. And the mother is taken and uh, put into this it's not really a nunnery, but it's kind of like a nunnery. She's she's locked up there. Um, they have like the, a sister who's an overseer, and she keeps her locked in a cell. And it's it's not the best of situations, and you will discover why that uh, that situation's a little shady. Um, but the little baby, of course, gets rescued by the witch in the woods. And when the witch comes and finds her. I can't remember if she was a little late, but she is trying to um, nurse the baby back into better health. And so she does a number of like little magical things, one of which is also to have her drink a little bit from the moon. And it's supposed to restore the, the baby a little bit. And usually this works out fine. But for whatever reason, this little baby drinks more than her fair share of the moon. <laughs> and so what ends up happening is she takes in power of the moon and she 
becomes more magical and magically inclined. Um, so the witch, whose name is Zan, uh, decides that she has to take the baby in and raise her because of this new magical ability that the baby has. It'd be too dangerous to leave her with a regular person um, in another village. So she decides she will raise the baby um, and treat her like her own granddaughter. Um, and she names the baby after a scar that she sees on the baby's um, head uh, that is in the shape of a moon. So she names her Luna. And yeah, she takes Luna to her little um, house in the woods and raises her. And what's really charming about her home in the woods is she has um, both a little dragon who thinks that he's really big. <laughs> Um, making Zan and the other person they live with um, giants. <laughs> the, little, the little dragon is Ferian, who is not actually a big dragon. He's a little, I can just imagine a little tiny dragon. And it was so charming. Um, and then Glurk, who is from the bog. So I just imagine like a swamp monster. Um, and there's a lot of great kind of things that go in with the bog and his tellings of the bog. So when Glurk speaks, make sure you pay attention because it's just interesting and fascinating. Um, and what they discover pretty early on is that Luna can't control her power and she goes kind of out of control. She will, like anything that she wants, she'll just make it happen magically and this becomes very risky. Um, and she's draining power, including from Zan. So Zan ends up having to bind her power. She binds her power up. And really what this does is it, it removes even any knowledge that Luna has of magic. And she's just completely shut off from magic. Um, and the spell is supposed to wear off when Luna is 13. And then Luna should be able to use magic again. But also Zan lets Glurk and I don't remember if Firion knows, I think, but that um, when Luna reaches that age and can use magic again, it's actually going to drain all of Zan's power and she will pass away, which is kind of sad to think about. And they, they of course, don't want to lose Zan. They love Zan. Zan's been with them for ages now and they don't want to lose her. Um, yeah. There's other perspectives within the book as well. So you will have the parts that follow like Luna's story. But on top of that, you'll see bits that are um, her mother's story and what's happening there. So there's also a young boy, two man, you follow him as he ages, who was training, I think, to be a town official or leader. But that ends up not really working out for him. I'm trying to remember everything that happened with his storyline, and I can't remember all the details. Um, he is in love with a village girl that he thinks he'll never see because she goes to join that kind of nunnery place that I mentioned before. Um, however, their stories do come and cross again later. Um, I don't remember why he was there, but he ends up like meeting... Luna's mother, who is still unsettled, and she, I know, I don't want to give that away, but like stuff happens, and it's so good, um, and in the end, there's just this big interconnecting of stories. Um, you will discover that there's something shady going on in that whole nunnery section, and that the leader of that organization is not so good. <laughs> it's maybe doing some, uh, yeah, wrongful business. So maybe what everyone in town was worried about with the witch in the woods is not who they should be worried about. And maybe it should have been the witch in the tower. Um, and it'll be trying to uncover that darkness, um, trying to find a way maybe that Zan doesn't have to die when Luna gets her power. Um, I don't know. And at the same time, uh, the young man is trying to get rid of the witch in the woods. Uh, 
it's all so complicated, <laughs> but it's so good. You get to know all of the characters and see all the twists and turns in this town. Um, and you really fall in love with Zan and Glurk and Firion and Luna, of course. Luna is lovely. Um, and you want to root for her to be able to uh, gain her powers but in a safe way <laughs> so that she's not doing anything bad. And um, you also really want to see the best for Luna's mom because once you see what's happened to her, um, you want to find a way for them to be reunited and for that poor woman to be treated fairly. <laughs> um, it's kind of definitely a pulls at your heartstrings kind of book. It is magical, it's lovely, and it's magical world building. Um, but at the same time, there's just so much heart to it. Um, yeah, this is a book that can be enjoyed by anyone at any age. It's just lovely. It's a lovely piece of work. Um, this did win the Newberry Medal, so you can probably see the nice gold label right on there. And, uh, I would say well-deserved. This is just... It's so lovely. The um, New York book, New York Times book review uh, on the front just says impossible to put down. Um, and I would actually agree with that. It's it's just so lovely. It's multi-layered. Uh, it's engaging. It's, it's great magic. It's great emotional content. This is a good one. I really, really loved this book. Um, so I would say if you have not given The Girl Who Drank the Moon a try, Yes, it is middle grade, and yes, you will enjoy it. <laughs> this is a great middle grade book to try if you have not read middle grade in a while. Um, read this, and you'll be like, wow, they're doing some amazing stuff with middle grade, and they are. There are some great middle grade writers, um, and it should be enjoyed by many, many readers. And of course, if you have young people in your life, I am sure they will enjoy this too. I might be recommending this to some younger readers. <laughs> so, yay. All right, that's it for this video. I will see you next time.